welcome back once again. Uh, some more math learning today for you. Uh, we're going to move into fractions. I know a lot of people uh, that I've encountered in my time, both young people, adults, they have a fear of fractions. I'm here to tell you there is nothing to fear. Fractions are not bad. Much like anything else in math, there are rules you need to follow. If you follow the rules, they're not so bad at all. Uh, we're going to start off with, uh, with having uh, fractions being added together and we're going to add them with uh, like denominators just to make things nice and easy. Now to keep things uh, uh, in perspective, if I have the number four fifths, uh, it's important that you know what I mean by my uh, terminology. W what is a denominator? Well, the denominator, our denominator is going to be the bottom number of a fraction. You know, you think of denominator down. Uh, that is our uh, the bottom number of a uh, fraction. Up top, we have our numerator, and that is our uh, the top part of a uh, of a fraction. So you think of uh, if you're good with directions, n for north, numerator, uh, d for uh, down, denominator, and uh, that is going to be uh, some pretty uh, Com, uh, common terminology used in the uh, world of fractions. So <clears throat> when we have common denominators, let's say we have uh, three-sevenths plus two-sevenths. Now what you'd want to do is think of it like this. Imagine if you have a uh, pizza and Oddly enough, it's cut into seven pieces. I'm not sure why they would cut it into seven pieces, but we're just going to pretend they've cut it into seven pieces. Um, and we're going to add it to uh, a pizza. You know what? We could even draw our pizza right here. Our pizza is not your typical pie. This pizza is more of a rectangular pizza. And so we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Not very good. Seven pieces right here. Okay, so we have a total of seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> and we'll say that I start off, I have three pieces of pizza. There's one, two, three pieces of pizza. And I'm going to eat, uh, I'm going to add to this two more pieces of pizza. And I ask you, if I have three sevenths of a pizza and I add two more sevenths of the pizza, how much of the pizza, I don't know, maybe these are pieces of pizza I've taken away from the box. How much have I taken? Well, I've taken a total of five pieces out of the seven that were there to begin with. I have taken five-sevenths of the pizza. I've taken well over half of the pizza. That is basically when you have common denominators. And when you have common denominators, it makes it nice and neat, uh, very easy. But you understand that you, you don't change the seven because the seven just represents I have a, p a whole the whole pizza, and I've cut it up into parts, and they're all equal parts. And in this case, there are seven equal parts. Therefore, I, I take three of those equal parts, and I, I uh, add it to two of the other uh, equal parts, and I have a total of five equal parts, five equal pieces of that pizza. Um, now, we have, these are just fractions we're adding. We could also do this with mixed numbers. Let's say we have um, three and one-fourth plus two and two-fourths. So basically I'm, I'm adding uh, uh, my, my uh, common denominators. Imagine we had three whole pizzas and then one-fourth of it that was, let's say we're having a pizza party at our, at our school in between two classes. One class they have three and one-fourth of a pizza left over. So three whole pizzas and a fourth of a pizza left over. Then the class next door to them, they have two whole pizzas and then two-fourths of their uh, pizza left. And so how am I going to add this? Well, I always suggest that when you are adding mixed numbers, you add them vertically, up and down. Do you have to? No. I just prefer doing that because by doing this, you are going to always think of adding and subtracting fractions as, uh, oops, adding and subtracting fractions one way and uh, multiplying and dividing in a different way. Careful with what we're writing here. This is live. So I have uh, three and one fourth plus two and one fourth, or two and two fourths, that is. 
And so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to first, kind of like when you're dealing with whole numbers and adding whole numbers together, I'm going to go over to my, my partial category. You know, like in the case of whole numbers, my ones category, I'm going to go in my fractional category. And since there already are um, common denominators, I can go ahead and add one-fourth plus two-fourths is a total of three-fourths. That's pretty much what we had done with the first example. And now I'm just going to add the, uh, the whole numbers. So I have three plus two is five. So in this case, we have five <coughs> entire pizzas, and we need to get one more box for the other three-fourths of the other pizza. So that's how much pizza we have all together dealing with fractions, you know, parts of pizzas. Because, you know, in real life, oftentimes we don't have perfect holes all the time. We have partials. We have uh, partial pizzas in this case. Now, this works the same thing with subtracting. Let's say we have, um, I don't know, 7 and um, 3 eighths minus uh, 5 and 1 eighth. Well, in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to, I'm just writing it up like this. this I, again, I recommend writing your, your problems up and down. I'm just going to save you the time and write them this way just because I prefer it this way. You don't have to do it this way. I just prefer it. I think it's uh, less likely to make mistakes along the way. But you do what uh, is most comfortable for you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract. So again, the eighths stay the same because that's, that's our whole was divided into eight parts. So we're going to have three minus uh, one is two. And then we're going to have uh, seven minus five is two. Now in mathematics, we like to have things simplified if at all possible. It makes things neater. Uh, easier to read, easier to work with sometimes. Uh, so we can simplify the 2 eighths. We can divide the 2 and the 8 by a common factor, which we would say uh, 2. And so we would end up getting 2 and 1 fourth. So when I subtract this problem, uh, 7 and 3 eighths minus 5 and 1 eighths, <coughs> I'm going to get 2 and 1 fourth. All right. We're going to start getting into more challenging problems here, things, issues that will arise, and these are going to be the problems that are going to cause you a little bit of heartache, but hopefully you'll become masters watching this. You'll say, you know what, this isn't that bad. We're going to do another subtraction problem, and let's say we have uh, 9 and uh, 1 fifth minus 4 and 3 fifths. Okay, well common error I see all the time is the student will want to do 3 minus 1 is 2 fifths. That is not the way we do it. When we subtract, we take our big number and we're going to subtract the smaller number from it, the smaller quantity from it. So we're going to have to do 1 fifth minus 3 fifths, which you know you can't do. You cannot take away from something that uh, there's nothing to take away from. So we're going to have to borrow. And we're going to borrow one whole number. So the 9 becomes an 8. Now, again, the common error I see is students will use what they've learned with borrowing in whole numbers and they would make the 1 into an 11 because that's what they would do before. They would just put a little 1 next to it and make it into 11. That is not the case. When we're borrowing a whole number, we're going to change it into a fraction. And what you want to do is you want to think what denominator would make it which denominator would be best to work with. And in this case, since we're dealing with fifths, we want it out of fifths. It could be any fraction you want to be as far as the denominator, just whatever is most suitable for the problem. In this case, so we're dealing with fifths, how many fifths is one whole? Well, if I have one pizza cut up into equal parts and I have the entire pizza and they're a fifth each, I'm going to have five fifths equals the one. So this is how we do this. I'm going to take the five, which is the denominator, and add it to this one. Five plus one equals six. And so I have six fifths. 8 and 6 fifths is equal to 9 and 1 fifth. They are equivalent. They mean the exact same thing. I just, I, I cut up the, you know, the one whole pizza into 5 fifths, and I have, now I have 6 fifths that are in slices. Now I can subtract. 6 minus 3 is 3, so I have 3 fifths. And 8 minus 4 is 4. And so I now have a total of 4 and 3 fifths when I uh, use my borrowing. That is <coughs> one of the more difficult things I see students encountering when they're dealing with their uh, subtraction and adding of fractions. It gives them the most problem, but as you see, it, if you follow the rules, it's not that bad. Now, kind of going along with this, what if I have um, 
a whole number like 12 minus 3 and 1 third. Now, th again, this can give some students major confusions because they're going to write it like this. They're going to do 12 minus 3 and 1 third. <coughs> and the mistake I see more often than not is they're going to take this and they're just going to bring a 1 third down here. And they're going to say this is 9 and 1 third. But that is not correct because if you have 12 and take away 3, you're going to get 9. So how can you take another third away and have, actually have more? That is not how it would really work in mathematics. We have to be careful with this. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to have to borrow. And so we're going to borrow from this 2 and make it into a 1. So now we really have 11. Uh, if it's easier, you can just cross out the 12 make it 11. Whatever is easiest for you. Um, and so now, if I'm borrowing 1, again here I know that 1 is going to equal 3 thirds because I can make any denominator that I wish. So I'm going to make this into 11 and uh, 3 thirds. Now this problem becomes very easy. 3 thirds minus 1 third equals 2 thirds. 11 minus 3 is 8. So my final answer is 8 and 2 thirds. Hopefully that makes some sense to you. <coughs> Actually, I think I got everything here. Let's try this. No, I didn't. So, um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on what happens when we are dealing with fractions, mixed numbers that have um, different denominators because that can be a bit of a problem. So let's say that I have uh, 5 and 1 fourth plus 3 and 2 thirds. What do I do? Well, again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write it this way. 5 and 1 fourth plus three and two-thirds. Now again, we're going to need to have a common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and put equal signs over here and I'm going to transfer the whole numbers. You don't have to, but I find that you tend to make more mistakes when you don't transfer the entire thing over. You, f you forget about things. So this way you don't forget about anything and it's going to be plus. Okay, let's not forget about that. And we need to find a common denominator. Maybe you've learned about finding the LCM, the least common multiple. Um, ways we can think of is, what is a multiple they have in common? And I'd like to have the smallest one, although it's not necessary to have the smallest one. Uh, sometimes you can just multiply them together, like 3 times 4 is 12. And you know what? In this case, 12 works. So we're going to put 12 for our denominator. Now this is the key. What do you multiply 3 by to get 12? Well, you multiply it by 4. If you multiply that by 4, you have to multiply the 2 by 4 also, and that gets you 8 twelfths. You want to make sure that the fraction with the th uh, on the right is equal to the fraction to the left. So you don't have to show that work, but you know in the beginning times, you may, you may want to begin by doing this so you are not making avoidable errors. So in this one, 4 times what number equals 12? Well, it's 3. So I have to multiply this by 3, and so 1 times 3 is 3. Uh, 4 times 3 is 12. Uh, so now I can go ahead and begin my problem. I'm going to add. 3 plus 8 is 11 over 12. And then 5 plus 3 is 8. And I have 8 and 11 twelfths. I'm going to do a few more problems. I know we're, uh, we're going kind of long today on the time, but there are so many possible scenarios. I think it's important that you see every possible one you can possibly uh, think of. We have not looked at uh, this type of addition problem. So we're going to go ahead and do, uh, what if I have 5 and 3 fourths plus 5 and, uh, I don't know, 7 eighths. So in this case, if I was to multiply 4 by 8, I'd get 32. But I'm sure I can think of a denominator or a multiple that is smaller that is still common. And actually, you know what? 8. Uh, 8 times 1 is 8. 4 times 2 is 8. Therefore, I can use 8, which is perfect. 